Welcome back to another Metacritic prediction video where we're going to look at some of the games releasing in the month of March and trying to guess how good or bad the reviews are going to be. If you guys have never heard of Metacritic before, it's a website that looks at all the reviews from all the media outlets and gives the game a final average score. If you guys want to play along, I have a list in the description of this video of all the games I'll be talking about today. You guys can take that list, go in the comments, and guess your scores just like all these people did last month. At the end of today's video, I'm going to look back at all my predictions of the month of February and see how well we did there too. But first, let's start looking at the games for the month of March. First game on our list is The Outlast Trials, the third game of The Outlast series and the first one to be in co-op. I love The Outlast series, the first one way more than the second one, and I'm very excited to play this one in co-op and see how it is. As you guys can see from the trailer, this game has been already in early access for a while, and the previews have been pretty good. A lot of people are saying how terrifying it is, and I can't wait to play it in a co-op aspect. The first game got an average of an 80, the second game actually got lower than that at a 75. I'm really hoping for the best with this one and I'm hoping for a big score, but I'm going to play it safe with my prediction. I'm going to aim for a nice 82, just a little bit better than the first one, but co-op horror always seems like something that's very difficult to pull off, so you never know. I'm going to play it safe and go with that score. Next on our list is the newest WWE game, WWE 2K24, coming out on March 8th. The last year's game got some really good reviews at an 82, and this one seems like a just a minor upgrade in every possible way. But I do feel like when you have such a good uh, base like they have with the previous game, it can only get better from there. So I'm only hoping for the best here. I think that this game has a lot of potential to be one of the best WWE or best wrestling games ever. So I'm going to go with a very high score of an 85. It's kind of crazy, but I just feel like this year is the year that they're going to pull it off and give us the best wrestling experience in a video game form. The next game on our list is Contra Operation Galuga. Galuga? I don't know how to say it. Coming out on March 12th. Oh, I don't have high hopes for this one. The Contra games, I don't have really good reviews as a whole, and everything I've seen from this one just doesn't seem that good, and the previews seem to say that it's pretty rough on the Nintendo Switch as well. Um, as you guys can see there, I don't have high hopes for this one. I always try to be positive, but this one just looks really rough, and from the previews, it sounds like it also plays rough, especially on the Switch. I'm gonna guess a 58 on this one, but obviously I really hope for better than that. The next game on our list is the newest Alone in the Dark, and I'm gonna say, I hate doing this back to back, but this is another one that just looks fairly rough. I'm hoping for the best, but everything I've seen from this game just doesn't look that great. And Alone in the Dark as a series hasn't had a good game in a fairly long time. If anything, it has some of the worst reviewed games in the horror series. Um, but I hope I'm wrong. It's been delayed a couple times. It could be a good, say, good thing or a bad thing. You never really know. I'm going to guess 63, which you might be thinking that's really low. That's actually really high for Alone in the Dark games. One of the games got a 19%. So again... Let's see what happens. We got three big games coming out on March 22nd, and the first one we're going to talk about is Dragon's Dogma 2. I know a lot of people love this game, the original one. I played just a little bit of the original, and I never was able to get into it. I was much more of a Monster Hunter fan, but if you guys don't know, very similar to Monster Hunter, but in a single-player focus, you can still get some AI partners there with you. You fight these giant bosses, go on an adventure. Everything I've seen from this game seems really fun, but there seems to just be something that's a little off. It seems like there's a bit of blurriness to the gameplay or the graphics that I just can't seem to put my fingers on, but it seems like something just doesn't look perfect. The first game got a 75, and honestly, I'm going to guess that this game is going to get around the same score. I just feel like a lot of people and the reviews are going to be fairly the same, where it's going to be a lot of really good uh, um, gameplay, but I feel like it's going to be missing out maybe on the story or the uh, graphical side of things, which is not the biggest thing, but obviously reviewers take everything into account. I'm sure it's going to be a huge, uh, it's going to have a huge following like the first one did as well, though. The second game releasing on March 22nd is Princess Peach Showtime. The first ever, I think, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the first ever uh, game where you're fully playing as Princess Peach and Mario and Luigi and the gang are not involved as, at all. This actually looks like it could be a hit or miss because it is a game where you are you have a hub world and within that hub world, you're just going to go to different levels and you're going to have these different costumes that Peach can wear and based on the costumes, you'll have different gameplay. I have a feeling that this game is going to not review as well as everyone would like to because with a game like this where you have a lot of different costumes and a lot of different abilities and skills, it does mean that some of them can be really good, but some of them can be really bad. And those bad ones are going to hit the reviews and hit it hard. But 
I think that this game, no matter what, is going to review better than Mario vs. Donkey Kong did last month. That game finished with a score of 76, so I'm just going to go with a 77 here and just say no matter what, this one has to do better than Mario vs. Donkey Kong. It still looks really fun. I just feel like because of the mix of the levels and stages, some of them can be some miss, uh, a miss, and that's going to really affect the reviews. The last game coming out on March 22nd is Rise of the Ronin, Team Ninja's newest game. And I don't know if you guys know this or not, they've been working on this game for almost 10 years. They started developing Rise of the Ronin in 2015. So this is one of their biggest skill games. They've been they've done a lot of games since then, but I guess over while working on their other games, they've always been trying to get this game ready. It looks like it's going to be a massive game exclusive to the PS5. And there's a lot of hype around this. PlayStation are really marketing this game as one of their biggest release of the year as well. And I, everything I've seen from this looks really good. Not the biggest fan of some of the graphics. I feel like it could be a little bit better. But the gameplay just looks spectacular. Very excited. There's four-player co-op as well. You get to create your own character. Oh, this is going to be a great one. I think this is the one that's going to get the biggest pop of the month and I think it's going to be about 88 which is the highest score I'm going to give any game this month and the last game we're going to look at for this month is South Park Snow Day the newest game in the South Park series coming out on March 26 but this one as you guys can see from the graphics they went 3D four player co-op so very different from the last two which were the fractured butthole and stick of truth um this could be very dangerous for them to go out of the way to do something different but also it could be really cool i'm gonna say i think that no matter what I'm going to have a lot of fun with this game. I'm a big fan of South Park. Uh, I, ha I do plan on playing it with some of my friends. I have like two or three of my friends that already plan on buying it. So you can see a lot of uh, fun and silly times with it. Hope it's funny because that's what South Park is all about. The last two games got 85 and 79. So I feel like this one can review anywhere in between. So I'm going to go with an 80. I feel like it could get some really good reviews and some not great ones. So I think it's going to average around that. I really don't know what the end score is going to be, but that's my guess. All right, now that we've went through game by game, here is the final result of all my predictions for the month of March. As you guys can see, fairly positive month. Hopefully it sticks to landing and all these games review even better than what I expect. But now let's go look at my predictions for February and how well I did there. As you guys can see right here, the list, these are my predictions from last month. First one up was Persona 3 Reload that I guess 90. The final score was an 88. So I was only two points off. That's not too bad in my opinion. Then the Suicide Squad, I was a little bit generous. I went 71. It ended with a score of 60. So not a good guess there. Then, oh, this one hurt. Foam Stars, if you haven't seen my review, go check out the review of Foam Stars. I guessed 78, it got a 59. Even worse than Suicide Squad, unfortunately. Helldivers 2, I guessed an 84, it ended with an 82, so again, only two points off. Banishers, Ghosts of New Eden, I guessed 75. Good news, it got a 78, so we've been better than what I expected. Ultras, I tried to guess an 82, it ended with an 81, so only one point difference. Mario vs. Donkey Kong, I wasn't too hot on it, I went for 70, it ended with a 75, that's awesome. And, oh sorry, a 76, even better. Skull and Bones, I went for a 60, the average was actually, or sorry, I went 65, the average was a 60, so I was 5 points off there, unfortunately. Pacific Drive, there's my winner ladies and gentlemen, got a 78. Uh, my guess was 78, and it got a 78, so right on the money there. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, actually took a long time for the reviews to come out. This is why my video is delayed. I was waiting for this one for the reviews to come out. I guessed 88. Unfortunately, it's a 78. The remake, not as good as the original it sounds as from what it sounds like. And then the big one, I tried to guess, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I went for 94. It ended with a very good 92. Those were my predictions last month. Let's see how we do next month. And that's the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and getting all the way to the end. I can't wait to see your predictions in the comments down below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe because we're going to do reviews, impressions of a bunch of these games as well. And we're going to do this every single month. This week, we're also going to be doing our first impressions of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So if you guys are interested and curious about that, make sure to be subscribed to see that as well. Have a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.